so welcome back and in our last video we talked about how to be able to bring in our image planes here inside of Mudbox so in this video we're gonna get started with our actual modeling so one of the things or not just one of the things but something that I always often work with that makes me you know makes me want to be able to to think about is how to work with the actual tools here inside of Mudbox. So one of the first things that people want to do and I see them do this all the time they come in here and they get their model they take their model and they just subdivide the heck out of it so that they can t start using their, their sculpt brush because if you see right now if I use my sculpt brush right this minute and start to sculpt with it make it a little bit smaller I start to sculpt with it you can see that it's not smooth and when pe most people see this they're like wow it's not smooth I need it to be really smooth so I can sculpt with it so they'll go in here and, and they'll hold down shift and they'll press D because shift D is the, su is the subdivide button so hit shift D and hit shift D and hit shift D and hit shift D and hit shift D until they have a model that is really really heavily subdivided so then when they make marks on their model then it's like oh wow yes that's what I needed I needed it to be this super smooth so that I could move things around and be able to sculpt on it I'm gonna tell you no <laughs> this is bad and the reason why this is bad is because I have all this topology and now I have way more topology than what I even know what to do with so this is actually counterproductive I find it very counterproductive to the sculpting process because like I say you gotta you, people wanna come in here and start bringing in details and they're like oh okay, I'm gonna add his nose in there but you can see there's so much topology to this and it's moving so quickly it's really hard to keep up with you know a way to be able to to manipulate all of these vertices now the machine that I'm using and you have to be very careful about this as well when you go and you keep subdividing if your machine can't handle it so if you do not have enough RAM in your machine your machine will start to get really really slow and it will probably start to get um, actually very inconsistent in how it in how it's being used so you have to be very careful when you're when you're pumping up the polygon count so I can go you know, I can go pretty high on the poly count on this machine this machine currently has um, 32 gigs of RAM 24 gigs of RAM of that 24 gigs of that are, are usable by Windows so Mudbox has a huge amount of RAM that it can pull from right now and keep subdividing this let's see how, how we can take this so that's 32 that's 32 million polygons let's see if we can actually get one more subdivision level out of this and we might be at the max of what we can can get out of this subdivide I'm gonna look at the task manager and see how much RAM we're actually using just for Mudbox by itself so let's see and look Mudbox is not even responding so I'm gonna say and it looks like right now that Mudbox is using about 10 gigs of memory on its own which is pretty significant and it's still going so it hasn't crashed yet so let's see what our see what our polygons gonna be right now we gotta remember our last subdivision we were at 32 million polygons let's see what we can get it up to and the mapping's done it's unmapping it and we're using 14 gigs of RAM 15 gigs of RAM so we are at 131 million polygons and we're using about 16 gigs of RAM in this machine so 93 percent of our RAM is being used CPU performance uh, we're right at 2.2 gigahertz really and RAM we are almost topping that out look, look at that that's actually kind of kind of awesome so you wanna you want to make sure that you have enough RAM to run and subdivide and, and be able to work with this and we can even see 
now it's finally a little bit laggy. So now, after all that, it actually is a little bit laggy here inside of uh, Mudbox. But, you know, that's 131 million polygons. That's, that's significant. Now, I can jump down at any given time. I can go back down to the lower levels of, of subdivision. I can go down by using the page down key on my keyboard. And I can go back up by using the page up key on my keyboard. So if, you, so if you've subdivided, you can go down and up and be able to do that by using your page up and page down keys. Now along with being able to subdivide, I can also I can also um, be able to do my sculpting on different layers. So I can sculpt things on different layers. And I'll show you that once I shouldn't have put it so high. So let's just let it calculate normals and all the other cool stuff. Um, and then I'm going to save out another, I'm just going to delete this, make a new file. So this file is really, this is really not something that I would use on a normal basis. I wouldn't, I probably would not crank a, a model up to 30, you know, 131 million polygons. But, if you can do it, why not try it, right? At least once. Live a little. So, um, so let's go back and get our regular base head and, and there it is so now we you know we do need to go back and add in our images and we can do that relatively quickly uh, it's not a big deal so I'll go in here to my side view let's add my image planes back um, and I will pause this while I add my image planes back because you shouldn't have to see that again so there they are I have my image planes back in there so I'm gonna come in here and look at some of the tools. So one of the things that you want to be able to do with your tools is you want to be able to think of this more like I want to use, I want to start out in the beginning using my grab brush. My grab brush is my best friend realistically because that grab brush lets me be able to be able to manipulate my shape and not add topology. So you want to be able to move this around until you get to a point where you can no longer uh, add anything to it and then you have to subdivide it. So in that vein I can come in here and say okay I'm going to grab it you know right about here make my brush a little bit smaller turn on the strength of it and I'm also going to turn on my mirroring function so here for the properties for my grab brush I'm going to go to mirror and I'm going to say mirror on X and you'll see that mirrors it that's right down the center and I have the little dot on both sides of my model and that shows me that I actually am mirroring one side of the model to the other side of the model so I'm doing both sides at the same time which gives me um, some increased speed so you can see I can come in here from the very beginning and start moving big pieces of this model around you know the eye sockets and things of that nature yeah, so maybe he has like a quizzical look. Let's take this out a little bit. So I can make a lot of changes with this, and and just the only thing I'm doing is grabbing things. So I'm gonna show you how this is useful. So I'm gonna go in here and go to my front view. So let's look through my front camera. So let's look through it, and I'm gonna zoom in or dolly in rather, and I'm gonna guess get her face, kind of set up in the same way that my um, image is set up. So let's go in here. I'm going to make my brush a lot larger so I can grab big pieces of this at once. Turn the strength up a little bit more. Grab big pieces. Pull the eyes out here. The ears. All this stuff comes up. Maybe like this. The jaw. come down a little bit like this let's pull down with where the mouth would be at right around about here and by using the the head that's already in there you'll see it has some natural loop edges already made for it 
So that's that's something that's helping us too. So we have animation loop edge is kind of already set up. So I pull that out. Let's pull out the neck kind of goes in. And this is shoulder. So let's get this up kind of where it needs to be. And I can always hold shift at any given time. And you, it, it, that, so when I hold down shift, that will switch to my smooth brush. And that lets me smooth out my polygons, which is really nice that I can do that. And I'm going to come in here and change the size of my brush again. And let's kind of get the ear. Let's pull the ear into place. So the ear is in place for the most part. There we go. Ha! So that's kind of where I needed to be on my front view. I'm gonna smooth this out some. Let's go to my side view and look at and see, look through this and see. So looks like things are there in my front view, but I gotta get the side view right. So my side view. Come in here and I brush a lot larger. There we go. Now you want to make sure that that tip in the middle of your brush, that that's where you're putting it to move pieces around that you want to move. That's kind of the brush itself. That's the main portion of the brush. Let's just kind of fix out her her head. I'm not really in love with that shape. Get this stuff up and get this up. So only thing I'm doing is basically coming through here and setting up the basics of how I want her head to be. Now you'll notice that I have not really modeled yet. I have not added any more topology. I haven't come in here and cut in pieces. I'm just moving around her base mesh. And I know the head shouldn't be it should be a little bit more round, a little more spherical. Not completely spherical, you know. It's not how your head is that's not how your head is. Let's kind of pull the cheeks out a little bit here. And I think that looks kinda of good. Let's go into perspective and look at this. Let's look and see what see what we've done to her. Well, we kind of got the ear a little bit. We can go back and fix that and go get the ear and and pull the ear around and down. So the ear a little bit, the face is there for the most part. I can see where I can come out and bring out some of these, some of this right here. And remember we can use our smooth brush to actually be able to go in there and smooth it. Or we can actually go click on our smooth brush and actually smooth with it. And it looks like the smooth brush is not actually working. So something's really weird going on with that brush. Let's look at the fall off, see what the fall off is. Uh, it looks like it's working, but it's really kind of at a really low level, which is very unfortunate. Yeah, it looks like it's working, but working at a very, very low level. Now, one thing that we've got going on here that just isn't going to work is this kind of butt gap in the back of her head. So we're going to just grab and pull verts. So I'm going to pull verts around. And you can see, just with a couple of tweaks, we're able to get a decent looking head starting shape to be able to continue to work with. Now I, I do need to figure out what's going on with my smooth brush. Right now it looks like it's not currently activating. But you can see that I was able to move around pieces of my model and by moving them around I'm able to get this done fairly quick to get everything for her at least in place on the base level. Now I can go in here and add in additional detail, but 
a lot of what I'm gonna do is already laid out and I'm just changing the size of my brush and stuff like that uh, so you'll see me jump into that menu quite a bit to change my brush size and then I can come back in here and smooth things out so let's look at my layers that's in there so I've got that I've got that brush now when I know that I've I've gotten to a point where I can't move anything else and everything is kind of moved as much as it could be then I know I need to subdivide but I don't want to subdivide too quickly that's the that is the problem that most modelers make they subdivide way too quick and then they have all these extra polygons in their model and it's like well how do I now move all this new topology and the old topology and be able to get something that looks you know appropriate so I'm just as you can see I'm just kind of moving around and pulling pieces to make sure things are proportional and let's pull this this way a little bit kind of trying to spread these polygons a little bit better they look a little stacked on top of each other and that's not what I, what I want I want them to have a little bit better spacing so let's pull that and pull that let's pull this in mastoids and this right here let's pull this stuff let's pull this pull this and pull all this stuff and there we go and there we go looks like got a pretty decent start to her and we got all that stuff in there. She looks like a vampire, right? She's like she's like vampiric. It's like a little vampire girl. Or woman. No offense. So she's in there. So kinda of got our base in there and in the next video we will continue working with getting more detail cut in here. So right now we're at a subdivision of one uh, I think this is level one of this model. Oh, I'm at the highest level, which is level zero. So, and you'll notice inside of inside of Mudbox, Mudbox counts starting at zero. So this is level zero, and then if we subdivide again, it will be at level one. So there you go. So I've got this in there right now, and there, that's pretty much all she wrote what we have right now for this I could do some stuff like being able to pull in like her nose and this is very rudimentary at this point so I'm gonna get a different fall off I'm gonna get like a, one of these a, like a little smaller fall off and kinda just pull out the nose the nostrils a little bit the wings of the nostril and I'm just doing that to pull that out just a little bit and I can even come in here and come right about here and push up into this start to push in the nose and things like that so got that going on too it's a little bit larger I'm going to spread out these polygons between these two areas so that's sitting kind of like right about there now I also want to be paying attention to how my my polygons are flowing on my face when I'm doing a lot of this work you know making sure they're rounding out the right way and and things like that you don't want to have you don't want to have a flat face so I got that doesn't look bad if I knew why my uh, smooth tool wasn't working then I could get this smoothed out looks like it wants to work but it just doesn't know how to work there we go it's not working as well as I would like it to but it's still there so we'll look at doing some additional sculpting in our next video
So, welcome back here inside of Mudbox 2015. I am your instructor, Dr. Domico L. Cunningham. And in our last video, we were talking about how to get the sculpting process started here inside of Mudbox. So, as I can see, I've got, you know, a little bit of the work done for our female that we were working on from last time. So, what I want to be able to do is I want to start to look at some of the tools a little bit more in depth. So, with looking at this, and I'm just making some tweaks and adjustments as we talk. So, looking at this, if I look at my image, if I go here and I go to my front view and I look through it, I can see that it looks like if we were to zoom this back where it's supposed to be at, looks like we're kind of on target nose might be a little bit off but we can get that back eh, it looks okay let's look at my side view look through that and see and that also looks okay so looks like my ears are a little too high and we can always fix that I can go ahead and grab this and I can grab really large chunks of this mesh and just move huge pieces of this at one time you can see that's really easy to move the stuff around so I can make really big changes to the skull at any given time and let's go and see what this looks like and that does look a little bit proportionally better because the top of the eye well the top of the ear rather should be right about the mid part of the eye kind of in that area make sure we don't overextend these so let's go in here and make sure we smooth them you know my smoothing works it looks like my smoothing is just having a really hard time with this particular piece so I'm gonna bring down my strength just a tiny bit and still go back and manipulate a little bit more and you can see I've got everything kinda going on the way that I really want it to be we look good alright smooth and stuff's kinda coming in there so kinda got our our face uh, and I think this might be a little bit of an issue but we can fix this a little bit later get that in with the ears and stuff like that so this stuff is in there. Now you have to remember you want to make sure that you do not subdivide your mesh too quickly. I believe that I'm at the place right now where if I go to my layers and I'm going to turn on a sculpt layer, I'm going to put a sculpt layer on and I'm going to subdivide this. So I'm going to hit shift and D, so shift D and it lets me subdivide it and you can see I now have more effective polygons to be able to work with and I'm going to grab this stuff right here and move and contort a little bit more and pull this in just a little bit for the ear right here so I'm just pushing and pulling this stuff in not really sculpting yet still just pushing and pulling uh, stuff on my model if I look at this Hey, we need to see what's going on with that with our smooth brush here. Looks like size is pretty big, strength. Let's try it at a hundred and see what's going on. Snapping. What kind of fall off do we have? Let's use a big soft fall off like this. And let's see, advanced. Look at the advanced tab and see if there's anything. Affect all layers. just seems like it's it's smoothing but it looks like it's smoothing really really slowly let's scale my, let's scale our model just for a second and see if uh... if that makes a difference select it and it won't scale so, let's see let's 
very odd. Uh, let's just type in our scale numbers. So we've effectively scaled it down, and I want to see if scaling it down actually uh, changes anything with the smoothing. No, nah, it just feels like the smoothing just doesn't work. So let's do this. Let's actually save this scene, and let's close Mudbox, and let's reopen. Sometimes, you know, computer programs can be a little bit finicky, so we'll just reopen it. It won't take long to open this back up. I really do think that there's something going on with that smoothing, because the smoothing should be a little bit stronger than that. It, it shouldn't take that much to uh, activate the smooth, because the model's not very high poly at all. So, here we go, we're back inside. Let's close this stuff. Let's open up our file. And there we go, there's the smoothing. Now the smoothing's working just fine. There we go. So, you see, sometimes you, you might have to close the program down, reopen it. It happens, it's a computer program could be the amount of RAM I was using or some other funkiness that was happening. So you can see with my smooth brush active now that I'm going to get my grab brush. Now you can switch to your smooth brush without actually clicking on it. You can hold down the shift key and when you hold down shift it will activate the smooth brush without you having to you know actually click away from the current brush you have selected. So holding down shift will let you temporarily get access to the smooth brush. So that's always that's helpful to know. Right. So she's using my smooth brush to kind of smooth this out a little bit. You can see the tensions kind of the the tensions getting pulled away as I use my smooth brush. It's kind of rounding out forms and it's not as protruding as it was. There we go. See that smooth brush now is working really well for us. So now we can really get this stuff kind of where we want it to be. So I've got these pieces kind of in there for her overall look of her face. Now I'm going to start bringing in some more detail. Now one of the brushes that I want to use, and this is a very good brush to be able to get a hold of and, and, and understand how to use it, is my bulge brush. My bulge brush lets me push vertices along the normal direction that they're facing. So every piece of geometry inside of 3D has a normal has a normal direction. It has a, a direction that it follows that's kind of a vector that leaves from the face of that object or from the vector of that object going away from it. Uh, almost like a ray. So normals are really useful inside of here because we get a lot of our, our a lot of our texture detail from normals but we also can use them and with we have the bulge brush the bulge brush will push out vertices along the normal that it faces so I'm gonna do this I'm gonna hold control so that I can invert the function of this so I'm holding down the control key and the control key will actually bulge in on a negative direction so you can see right now I'm bulging it in the other way so I'm bulging it in inward. So I'm kind of bulging that in, let's bulge this in, and let's bulge this in. So you can see I'm bulging this stuff in. And I'll get my smooth brush and come back and smooth this. So you're probably saying, well, you know, D, why are you, why'd you push it in just to smooth it? It looks like it's going back to where it was. Well, it's really not. It's a little bit deeper in there than it was before. So that's something that we wanted and hold control and let's kind of bulge this in negatively so we're pushing this in, so we're bulging it in and then come back and smooth it. Now this will clean up a lot better when I have more polygons. Right now there's not enough polygons to actually get it clean clean. So now I'm going to use the bulge brush here so make it a little bit larger. So these are smaller fall off your fall-offs are great because they're like they're they're kind of like being able to change the tip of the brush 
when you're using these clay brushes, when you're using these brushes to move your clay around. So there are quick ways to be able to change the way that brush works and um, get different results with that particular brush. So you can see I'm able to, I was able to kind of get that ear going right there. I think her ear is a little bit too big, right? I think that's a little bit too big. But we can always go back with our grab brush at a larger setting and be able to grab it and just kind of pull the ear into submission. I think it's probably more like that. So there we go. Something like that. And hold shift and be able to and bring this closer to the head as well. Right? And let's turn down the size of this brush. Let's bring it in. Now the other thing to be very careful of when you're using this when you're using your brushes is to know that that point in the middle of your brush circle, that point right in the middle of your brush circle, that is the tip of your brush. That's the the area of influence. So you want to really get that little dot where you want it at when you start pulling and pulling on pulling and pushing on pieces. That's going to give you the the most effective use of that tool. So I'm also going to come in here and start maybe just go back to my front view just for a second and let's zoom in cuz remember we we did some major changes to this just a second ago. So somewhere in here. I think that front view is not completely uh, accurate, but we'll use it as a, as, a, as a mild guide as we go about our business of building this face. So, kind of just lining the lips up a little bit, just getting, so you can see that gives me the little nice little line up for the lips. And I'm going to go and turn this down. And this is going to be turned up. So now I've got this. Now maybe I'll kind of pull the lip out right down here. And you can see I'm doing the same thing. I'm not keeping this in the same place for very long. Now you can do this with a, with a, uh, with a mouse and keyboard. You can do this. Currently right now I'm using a Wacom tablet. It's a very old Wacom tablet, but it still works. It's an older Graphire. Um, but it's still a perfectly good tablet. I actually have most of the tablets that Wacom makes. Um, it's a perfectly, you know, sound. It's a sound investment. Getting a tablet is a really sound investment. You're going to use it for years to come. So, don't think you know you're going to get it and just kind of let it sit to the side. If you're serious about doing this type of work, you're going to be using this Wacom tablet all the time. Like it will become your main tool on the computer and they work for Mac and and PC and you know so you can use them on different platforms and everything else too so uh, it's real useful to be able to know so I got this and it's just pulling right now I'm gonna pull this up smaller brush push up his nostrils larger brush shape this quicker let's get the socket let's make this brush a little bit larger get a bigger fall off with it too there we go a smaller fall off and looks like we are set to go so those things look look pretty okay I think this might be a little too close so get a bigger fall off and kinda pull this stuff out a little bit keep the nose tight in here and keep this pull this right here that's there it's there so I've got fair amount of detail in there so I can keep adding detail I can use my bulge brush I can use my grab brush I haven't used my sculpt brush yet my sculpt brush actually does what it sounds like it actually will sculpt so 
so get a smaller fall off for it and let's change the size of this brush Oops. so let's come back in here and change the size of this brush and the strength of it remember I can hold control and do a negative um, push in instead of pushing out so one of the things you want to do when you're working with any of your brushes and any of the stuff inside of mud boxes you kind of want to push and pull things against and from and against each other so like right here I'm kinda of like cutting in the mouth so I'm pushing in and I will soften this a little bit and then down here I'll just use my my brush without negatively doing it so instead of just grabbing it I'm just gonna sculpt on it and then use my smooth to smooth this out smooth to smooth it out smooth to smooth it out so you can see I'm, I'm actually able to get those shapes and forms in there pretty quick with this with my brush now I could use the bulge brush right the bulge brush puts it out along the normals I don't have to worry about trying to get it at the right normal angle because it pushes out along the normal it just does it automatically for me so keep that in mind as well see that nice hold shift and kinda of take this back a little bit so I kinda of got the lip coming in there I'm gonna get my grab brush at this point and then grab these verts grab my model and hold shift stuff out here there we go so I also have my pinch brush my pinch brush is really nice because this will give me a hard pinch line with my vertices or with my model so I can and I like to keep my wireframe on so I can see what's happening with my model as, as I'm working with it so I'm gonna just come in there and use this I'm gonna turn down that pinch get a nice taut tight tight pinch and you can see those ver those uh, lines are getting drawn together and by drawing them together they're tightening up the edge the same way if you were doing like supporting geometry inside of Maya on its own so you can see there we go I can do the same thing here I can come in here and you know pull this tight right here same thing here it tight right there now I don't have a lot of geometry so that's one of the things that's uh, killing us right now so I'm gonna subdivide and go up another level so subdivide and you see I'm at 32,000 triangles which are which is not that bad I'm gonna get my bulge tool I'm gonna do a negative bulge and push this in because now I have enough polygons here in the ear to start carving in some detailing in my ear or at least starting to get the inner parts of the ear the way that I would want it. See that? Pretty nice. Go back and hold down shift and smooth some of this stuff out. A little too harsh. So smooth it out. And I got the inner parts of my ear started. Hold control. Let's just cut in there a little bit more. Cut in, cut in cut in, cut in, hold shift and there we go and that looks okay not perfect but it's starting but you notice that I'm not like subdividing everything all at once I I'm doing some work getting some stuff worked in and then when I decide oh you know what can't get any more out of that. Let me subdivide. That's why I'm subdividing, but not before. All right, get the little part of the earlobe right here. So getting the part of the earlobe right there. Oh, hold control so I can push this in. 
and we know that kind of does a number like that depending on how the earlobe is right Did, everyone's earlobes are a little bit different they're kind of like fingerprints they're, they're not all the same so let's just give her a interesting earlobe and let's push this in right here get that inner ear started and I'm just doing it enough to have something in there and then I can also go back and get my grab brush and just grab this piece right here and just kind of pull that soften it so eh, it's an okay ear it's not a fantastic ear but it's okay it's enough to hear what's going on alright so kind of got that laid out so I've got that going on and you can see now it's actually pretty easy to sculpt here inside of Mudbox. You've really just got to spend the time to learn your tools enough to be able to get the results that you're looking for. That's kind of the biggest thing. It's getting the results that you're looking for. It's always you know nice to have a happy accident but you have to have something that's reproducible. And I still don't like the way that comes out right there. Her ears are weird. Get a really big, large chunk of this ear. Get a small fall off for it. Let's bring those ears in. And I know that it might actually be wrong, but I just don't like the way that I see it sits on the head. So if it's if it's not 100% accurate, it's because that I'm taking liberties with the head, right? So there we go. So in our next video, as we continue this on, we will continue to do some more detailing. I'm going to do actually do some detailing off camera, and come back, and we will continue to look at how we can work with this inside of Mudbox 2015. And I am Doctor Media. Signing off. See you next time.